Okay, I'm just gonna do a little sealing of some trays. Of these incense trays. So these are some red and gold, black and gold, purple and pink, blue and gold. I got some over there too. I'm just bringing those over as I'm doing them. This is the second coat. I've already done one coat of this polycrylic, so that's why you see you'll get a little shine to them. Uh, I like to do two to three on these. It's just more aesthetics than anything else. Um, now I'm just going to coat, see, just to see what I've already done. Uh, kind of hold it at an angle to the light so I can see what I'm doing. But I do not seal the bottoms of these. Uh, not everything that I do, I seal bottoms. I really don't like to seal them. Um, because you still want these things to breathe for a, for a while to make sure that they're very good and cured out. Um, and they won't cure if they can't breathe. So I just like to put a real thin coat on. Uh, with these, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I do like to do a few coats on. It doesn't do really anything except, uh, you know, just kind of coat some. Uh, these are in, used for incense, so it's not like they're going to be in a watery environment. Uh, or they're going to be burning extremely hot where you have to worry about um, vapors and all that other fun stuff. Um, these may just be stuck on somebody's shelf in their living room. So these got a huge amount of detail and this detail is what I really want to put that polycrylic in to uh, make sure that it's good and stable in there that we don't have any issues because uh, I want these to have bubbles I want these to have little defects if you want to call them that way because um, you know anybody can buy something that's made in you know overseas and it's perfect and it you know looks you know if made out of plastic or even if it's made out of wood you know it has no character to it the people that came by this weekend and bought every single one of these i had that was in this in the multicolored stuff they like them because they're different they're all unique and the character that's in the sides and the top they just love that character. The character is like this. Look at that. I mean, that just looks like fire running down the side. I mean, that's just that's just cool. I don't know. I don't do the bottoms. These don't have feet on them yet. I got some more feet coming in today. Um, I like these little silicone door. They're called door door stoppers <laughs> for like your cabinet doors. That's what I use for feet for these. But see, they just love that detail. It goes down the side. The swirls looks like fire in them. I mean, they just love it. People love this stuff. You know, and it's something different. It's also something that, you know, you can only get in ones I do. Unless you're doing the same type of method here where you're, where you're pushing the limits on colors and and you want that character you don't want that smoothness because i don't want these things to be smooth i want them to look to look kind of cool i need some more down in there a little extra in there is not going to hurt it i like a lot down in that one side i go over these a few times when i do them so they probably get about more coats of uh, polycrylic in the end, but my goal is at least two. Um, see, this one's got this cool little notch out of it. Looks like a looks like a, a knot from a tree. I mean, that's cool. And that's what seem people want. They want things that are different. 
one of the things I noticed was um, none of the ones that I had that were solid colors sold. People liked them, but they really didn't care for them because they were solids. They want this, this detail. They want that difference. They want that uniqueness in, in, in what, what they're buying. They want that. So to me, you know, uh, you got to give them what they want. And if that's what they want, and as you guys know, I do a lot of custom stuff. I do a huge amount of custom stuff compared to probably quite a few other people. Um, so I do a lot of oddball things. I do a lot of funky color mixes. I do a lot of things that a lot of people won't do. But um, it seems to be what the customers I deal with want. You know, they want this movement. They want the bright colors. They want the gold. Uh, you know, they want the texture. Uh, and you can't get some of this stuff by just pouring it in a mold and hoping that it's going to work. You know, or everybody be able to do it. Um, some of this stuff is just hard to put on video because, number one, uh, I'd have to record everything I do, and that's not going to happen. I just don't. I just don't have time for that. So I try to pick and choose what I'm going to record, and uh, kind of play it from that area, you know, aspect because. You know, I mean, I'm. Our market was so successful Saturday, and normally I take Sunday off. And Sunday was planning and pouring more stuff. I mean, we sold that much stuff that I actually had to pour on Sunday, which is normally what I don't do. I normally plan everything I'm going to pour on Monday, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on Sunday. I normally just sit down at the table and figure out what we sold, get everything keyed in, make sure that the website's right and up to date, and, um, you know, work from that point. But I normally don't, normally don't pour on Sunday. And on Sunday, I was pouring from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. constant. I mean, I, I don't think I took... Uh, an hour off all Sunday. It was all, you know, measuring, pouring, measuring, pouring, measuring, pouring stuff on Sunday. I mean, it was crazy. Um, so I'm almost caught up on everything I needed to either replenish stock or to uh, get ahead or to do things for you guys, which is record videos. I mean, it was just, Saturday was just crazy. It's the most money I've ever made in a market. And I've made some really good markets. And Saturday was just, we figure it was 18% above what we normally, or what I've, the best I've ever done. And it's like, it was crazy. It was just crazy. I mean, it's great. So, see, this is one of the blue and golds. And with a lot of texture. And people went crazy over these. So you look at that side. I mean, it looks like somebody beat it up with a stick. Um, and the people just loved this. They just went crazy over this. I actually had one that had a defect in it. And they bought that one too. And it's like it's got a defect in it. I mean, it had a chunk out of the side. <laughs> um, and they wanted it. Some people bought it. They said it's just so cool looking. I mean, it had a chunk out of it. Uh, I have a black and gold one that has a chunk out of it. It was actually me when I picked it up. I broke it. Um, but see that vibrant, that vibrant cobalt blue in there. I'm using this cobalt blue. That is just so cool. So it's one of those things that 
I like getting this polycrylic in those holes. And yes, I'm working over my camera. <laughs> it's the only way I can get these things staged where I want to get them staged. <laughs> is I actually work over my camera. Um, what I'll do, because i got more of these to seal. i got some black and gold ones. Is I'll, I'll seal them where the camera can see them. And then I'll just stick them back over here. Um, but this is kind of what I do. I just, uh, I'll put on three coats of these today to get that on. And, uh, let's see, this is where I go back over. I do a little touch up, pick up any additional little stuff I want to fix. And then I'll just let them just sit and just cure up for a while then I'm going to put this back over here get this out of my way so this is another black and gold one that I got a lot a lot a lot of texture in here um, this is another one that was extremely popular Saturday I mean they bought them all I was just amazed I was just amazed because the first time I've I've put these I've actually put them out for sale I don't even have them on the website yet, um, but see, look at that, look at that lovely texture running at the side, lovely movement, I love the movement, and this one's got a lot of texture on this other side, I just love how this one looks, so, <laughs> make sure there's nothing on it, you seal it in, see this one's got a huge amount of texture on it, looks like somebody just gnawed on it. And I think it's just one of those things that just, it's very cool. So that's not to, you know, that's why I like to seal these really, really hard. Uh, multiple coats, because I don't want to lose that texture. Um, if somebody hits it or something, or drops it or whatever, they, they, uh, it kind of keeps all that, keeps all that uh, detail on it. Okay, so this is the other one. This one to me has a defect in it when I picked it up. I picked it up a little hard and it broke. But I am going to put it up on Saturday. See, it's got this raggedy edge here. And what I've noticed is people like that. They want that raggedy. They want something that's very unique. And out of these guys, you figure these are all unique to begin with. Um... And then you get something with this. Looks like somebody took a bite out of it. There you go. Now you can kind of see that. It's really cool. Um, that was me grabbing it too hard uh, when I was moving them around and I broke that edge. But, you know, I'm going to put it up and see if somebody wants it. And I'll let you know if it sells on Saturday. Uh, but see, I like to really put those coats on heavy. And I like to put on about three, three to four. Get in all the little air bubbles to get that done. I was debating actually going through this one and on some of my pots that I've got these little defects in, if you want to call them defects or unique features. Um, I run a gold edge around it. I don't know if I can run a gold edge around these. It may not be worthwhile to try let's see we got all these i have a lot of these to do today got that like cobalt blue right in the middle of it so i like to get that down in that seal all that color in so it's really really cool i poured this one different than the other blue one because the other blue one has the blue, I worked the blue paint in a little bit longer into my mix. And, um, it, uh, so you get, the, the blue started to dissolve. And it has these blue, blue lines, almost like, like you put it on with a paintbrush. Let's see. 
that one down. And then another one that was extremely popular was these guys. Just a simple black swirl. Nothing fancy, no gold, just a simple black swirl. I sold those out before we even opened. <laughs> I mean, I had people coming up even before I was open and said, can I buy those? So it was like, yeah, I'll sell them to you. It's all the same price. But it was like, cool. So I'm making, I made quite a few of them. I got two to seal, but see, this one has all this lovely little detail on it. All the little raggedy, you want to call it a raggedy edge, with those, uh, you know, with all that texture there. So, yeah, these were extremely popular. I was really, really, really surprised. Um, especially when you sell them all before you even open <laughs> You know, just the people that are walking around, you know, the little, I mean, you know, these markets are pretty open, so anybody that's just walking around prior to the market, uh, yeah, they just, you know, the times they get first pick, this is this other black one that I had that's got this really cool design, a lot of texture in it, really can't f feel it, I know you guys can't feel it, I can see it on this end. It is just so, so, so cool. And this is the polycrylic. I like it. It's waterproof. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Uh, I know that there's debate in the all over the place about how safe polycrylic is to burn, but nobody's lighting these incense trays on fire. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm more concerned about that they get, uh, if somebody drops something on them, like the ash, they can clean it off. And with this sealer on there, just wipe it down, off you go. Looks good as new. Yeah, I do a lot of these trays, so I'm pretty quick at it now. So that's it for... Sealing incense trays. I'll probably spend about another five minutes here doing these little piddly touch-up things here where I'm just getting a little excess that I see around the edges and just smoothing it out. I'm not too worried about what's down in the middle. Uh, that gives me, see, I can get that out of there. Let's see, just with the tip of this little foam brush. And then you get that out of there and just spread it out. So that looks pretty good. Those look pretty good. That one is cool. That one is probably going to be my favorite. It just looks like somebody lit it on fire. God, that is cool. That's got to be my favorite. I need to make some more like that. That gold is just really, really, really cool. I love that one. That one I probably won't have after the weekend, but I may keep that one for myself. <laughs> yeah, this is a, you know, you can always tell, you know, you normally keep your really, really good stuff. Because <laughs> you don't want to let loose of it. See, this one's got more of the blue that kind of faded in on that one side compared to this side. Got the vibrant gold in there. Well, that's it for sealing incense trays. Um, some mold I got from the UK from Daddy, I mean uh, Devon and um, I'm very very pleased with this very very pleased with the mold so that's it I'll post this one I'll post the demold of that uh, purple purple and pink one later today with that with uh, and uh, that's about it. I'm just going to play this little touch-up for another five minutes. I don't think you guys want to hang around for that because it's just me being more repetitious of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with my little foam brush and making sure that I don't have any major excess later on. So that's it. Okay, bye.